They say it takes a village to raise a child because children need a lot of different people to look out for them. Families can use all the help they can get. After all, no parent is perfect. That's why McCoy leads the Early Intervention and Prevention Initiative. We want to showcase all of the excellent programs in our city that help families learn and grow together. Because when we learn and grow together, we make our village a better place to live. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoy this episode of Our Kids, Our Families, Our Communities. Communities. My name is Mitzi Wilson. I'm the Early Intervention and Prevention Initiatives Director at McCoy. And this show is to provide youth and families across Indianapolis, Marion County, information and resources to help youth in our community thrive. Today, our show topic is going to be on the issue of LGBTQ youth and the issues that they face, as well as resources um, for individuals in the L LGBTQ community in Indianapolis. And so to begin our show, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our guest. And we can go ahead and start with you, Amber. Um, if you could tell us a little bit um, about um, your organization and who you're with. Hi, my name's Amber Ames, and I'm the executive director with Stopover. Stopover has been around since 1970, and we provide crisis intervention, shelter, and transitional living to youth 11 to 22 here in Marion County. Thank you. And Miranda? Hi, I'm Miranda Warden. I'm the Director of Programs and Training at Indiana Youth Group. Uh, we are, are a social service and community support center for LGBTQ youth and their families. Um, ages 12 to 20 at the ages of youth we serve. We have an activity center that provides a plethora of um, kind of well-rounded programming including family programming and then training in the community for our educators and, and community members. Thank you. And Lo? My name is Lo Ray. I'm a youth at IYG and also a social work student at IUPUI. And thank you all for being with us here today. Um, I want to first begin just by kind of sharing a little bit more about IYG. Yeah. Um, so Miranda, if you can tell us a little bit you know, more about what you do um, and the services that are available through IYG. Yeah, so we've been around since 1987 um, in Indiana, an LGBTQ youth center. We have an activity center at the center of 46 in Benford where we have drop-in hours and youth can just come and hang out Wednesdays and Thursdays 3 to 9. Fridays 3 to 11. We have support groups and other programming while the center is open, but we also have a family support program to help protect youth in uh, making sure that they have a safe and accepting environment when they go home. And we also provide training in the community for educators, social workers, healthcare providers, et cetera, et cetera, and LGBTQ and, and trans cultural competency. So again, youth can have a safe space to go even outside of IYG. So they can go to the doctor and be safe and go to school and be safe is the hope and the, the vision in that. Thank you, and you kind of you know mentioned a lot about just kind of having a safe place for youth in the community, particularly um, you know LGBTQ youth. Um, and I know that that's something that also um, Stopover provides. Um, can you say a little bit more about the programming and supports at Stopover? Right. Well, Stopover was established to help youth in crisis who weren't able to remain in their home for a short time initially. So up to 20 days, we would work with a youth and their family to try to identify the crisis and um, help them return home. We still provide emergency shelter, but we also provide transitional living program for older youth who are 16 to 21. And for whatever reason, they're not going to be able to return home. That um, a lot of our youth are actually LGBTQ youth who have been asked to leave or kicked out of their home and are looking for a place to go. And, and our primary goal is to make sure kids are safe and secure. Uh, we provide that throughout Marion County, uh, typically but are open statewide. We have a counselor who works with the young person to identify what their goals and wants are and help them uh, establish, accomplish those. We also make sure the kids are in school, are if they're old enough, working, and developing life skills to be out on their own. Again, safety is one of the number one uh, issues that, that we face. We want to make sure that our kids have a place to be safe, to be kids, to be young adults, and have experiences that other youth have. Uh, this past year, we became the coordinating agency for National Safe Place in Marion County. So we have a responsibility to go out to those places where you see the yellow triangle sign um, that say safe place on them and make sure that they are safe. 
that the staff there is trained to know how to respond when a young person comes in asking for help. And then we meet with the youth and potentially their family uh, to make sure it's safe for them to go home or to come to our shelter to stay for a few days. We do that through educating the youth. We've reached about 20,000 youth this year just to let them know about the program and over 17,000 uh, adults. And you both have, you know, really talked to a broad range of services. Um, and, you know, really one of the, the goals for us in having this show today was, you know, um, to acknowledge that um, June is Pride in Indianapolis. It's a month of Pride, um, but also kind of alongside the taping of this show, we kind of have um, the occurrence of, very, of a very kind of horrific, um, you know, national tragedy in Orlando. Um, and so, you know, as you speak to safety, um, you know, it's kind of just, you know, nationally people understand that um, there's often, um, you know, individuals that are in the LGBT community um, face kind of hate and violence. And sometimes it's um, not intentional, but just misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. um, and so we want to kind of bring this dialogue to our viewers. Um, and so, Lo, if you could speak to um, really kind of some of the, you know, issues that, you know, youth might face, especially kind of within the school environment, um, you know, and what, you know, to make people aware of those circumstances. Absolutely. Um, so I'm a couple of years out of high school, but I think high school was a very prominent time for me coming out. Um, and I think the hardest part for me was going to the bathroom and finding resources at my school that were supportive as far as staff and making friends, you know, and feeling like I had a community to belong to at school outside of IYG. Um, so going to the bathroom was really hard. Um, I wasn't always sure if I should like wait a minute or two or where I should go to the bathroom or where, where it would be safe to go and where it would be safe to hang out. Um, and talking to family, um, making friends, um, struggling with mental health was a really um, hard journey for me and it still is. And going into college with more resources was helpful. But even in college, it's a different space. And so finding resources on campus, um, people to go to for um, advice, um, struggling with mental health, struggling with grades and school and where to go in life, you know, mm -hmm. is, you know, you're so young and you're still figuring out your life and then struggling with your identities is just um, very difficult. Um, and IYG was a place that I found a lot of um, resources in a safe place to, from. So. I thank you for sharing your experience and that, you know, you speak to things that, you know, sometimes a lot of us, you know, take for granted. Mm -hmm. And so how was it um, that you took steps to, you know, find support or get connected to IYG? Yeah, so I remember coming into high school as a 15-year-old um, after having some really hard times in middle school um, being bullied and um, someone connected me to my high school's Gay Straight Alliance okay. and in turn connected me to IYG and I've been there, been going for about five years now, and it is like a second home to me, a second family. It's um, it changed my life, um, and so I guess reaching out when I can, and people I feel comfortable around and supported around, um, and asking the right questions and feeling like I belonged. Um, but I feel like I got pretty lucky um, finding out about IYG so young. So, thank you, and that's yeah. you know definitely helpful information for our viewers. Um, and you spoke to just kind of a lot of um, different circumstances that youth may have to face. Um, I know one of those is um, family rejection. Um, can you speak a little bit more about like what those um, circumstances would be like and um, you know what resources you have available both at Stopover and IYG? Okay. <laughs> well, and a young person coming out LGBTQ uh, we're really looking at one in four are going to be asked to leave their home or kicked out. We get a lot of calls from young adults who that has been the situation. They may, it may not be a parent, it may be a significant other of a parent who is in the house, um, but whatever that situation is, they are asked to leave, asked to leave and searching for housing. Uh, what happens at that point when we look at homelessness is uh, it's really dangerous to be a youth who is homeless, but that increases when you are LGBTQ due to discrimination, stigma. Um, you also have increased mental health issues just as the family rejection. Um, you're looking at increased uh, chances of being victimized, sexually assaulted, exploited, and so it's important that we provide services that are inclusive and accepting and safe. 
um, even though a young person may have been uh, asked to leave or kicked out is, is more like it, we will still continue to reach out to the parents if that is what they desire and have had situations in the past where kind of an extended time out was what really worked in that situation. That in this case, mom was able to kind of step back and look at her feelings for her young, her young person and how her significant other was impacting that. And she had a tough choice to make. Uh, it may not be tough for everyone, but in her situation, it was. And that situation ended up a happy ending that after a year, uh, she made the choice to ask her significant other to leave and her, her son to come back home. Um, but I think it's important to look at what are our youth facing? The LGBT community especially, that homelessness is rough enough, but mm -hmm. when you have other issues going on um, where it's not as widely accepted in the community and you have the just stigma placed mm -hmm. with the family, how do you overcome those barriers? Right. Yeah, and I, to echo and piggyback on everything Amber said is absolutely right. And when, when we're, we're working with LGBTQ youth, we're working with human beings and they, they have a whole self to them as well. So just like Lopate uh, mentioned too, we're talking about mental health, we're talking about school environments, we're talking about home environments, we're talking about neighborhoods, we're talking about doctor's offices. And so they're, they're touching all of these systems and all of these spaces and to experience rejection in the one space that you're supposed to be safest, the one space you're supposed to be loved unconditionally, the one space that you're supposed to find solace and, and solitude and peace, to be rejected there. Can you imagine how that impacts a human being, let alone a human being that's already vulnerable and already scared and already struggling with mental health, with depression, with anxiety, with very likely suicidal thoughts. Um, and so we meet those youth where they are and we provide them the safe, safe space of what we can in IYG. But we realized uh, several years ago, specifically after Caitlin Ryan's research came out about how prevalent suicidality becomes when family rejection is, is present, LGBTQ youth are already four times more likely to be suicidal than straight youth. If they come from a rejecting household, that goes up even 8.5 times more likely. And we just can't ignore that. And so we now, we then, after that research was published and we were gracefully able to find some funding, we started a family program to help families where they are as well. And so um, where they are is not usually where the youth is because we're all at different stages in this journey, right? But if we can meet the youth where they are and work with them and empower them and instill some hope in them, meet the family where they are and work with them and empower them and instill some hope in them, we have really found through through doing that, touching both, both of those um, facets, that the uniting factor is love. Mm -hmm. And they just love their kid. And um, if we can unite them over that, and then we can, we can meet in the middle somewhere. And unfortunately, sometimes we can't. And so you get the, the kicking out, and you get the homelessness, and then all the other social health disparities obviously come into play, like Amber was mentioning. And um, we, we're here to work with those kids, too. Well, you, thank you. And you all three have um, really touched on the, you know, the impact in terms of mental health. Um, and so just so our um, viewers know um, kind of what might be some, you know, some ear markers or some signs um, that a person, um, you know, might need support um, that may be facing or, you know, considering suicide. What are some of those signs that people should be looking out for? Yeah. So warning signs specifically is isolation. So people who are really withdrawing themselves from the people that they might find support in, if they have that support group, um, not engaging in things that they normally would find fun or enjoyable, right? Um, increased use of drugs or alcohol, um, a lot of really uh, kind of mood dysregulation, so their moods can be up and down or really low or, or whatnot, um, and actually talking, saying the words, um, I don't want to be here, and I don't want, or I don't want to wake up, or I want, I want my life to end. And uh, these are words that we all need to become more comfortable with hearing and with saying because um, suicide is a public health issue. More often than not, people have either had suicidal thoughts or have known people who have had suicidal thoughts or attempt, attempt, attempted themselves. And that has a stigma around it too. So imagine being LGBTQ youth and all of that stigma and then also having mental health issues and suicidal thoughts and the stigma there. And you're really putting at risk an, all, an already vulnerable population. 
And so I think the less, more we can decrease the stigma around LGBTQ youth and around uh, suicide, the, the more help and the more lives we're going to save. Thank you. And in terms of um, you know the services that both Stopover and IYG Indiana Youth Group um, have, um, I understand that you both have crisis lines um, available. Um, can you just you know I want to repeat that a couple times during the show, but if you could share um, you know how someone would access that crisis line. Okay. Our crisis line is 24/7. Uh, call anytime and you will get a live human being because um, we are staffed 24/7 and. You know, we're really there to be a resource to community members, other agencies, youth themselves, who find themselves just stuck, not knowing where to turn. Um, whatever that reason may be, they're looking for help, they're looking for a resource. We're going to talk to them, try to talk them through, identify what, what is happening, if um, there are some other alternatives. Because usually people are calling saying, you know, I need a place to stay, I can't go home, or I don't want my young person to come home. or something like that. Um, and we want to talk that through a little bit. What is this crisis going on right now? Um, are there services in the community from us or from someone else mm -hmm. who can intervene? Because homelessness should be the last resort. Mm -hmm. Coming to a shelter sh should not be the number one thing on your list of things to do, uh, no matter how safe or inclusive we are. Yeah. It's, it's not a place to go. Um, so we're going to try to talk through what the issues are, identify other resources out there, explain our programming and what we offer. Uh, we're going to offer counseling outside of shelter if that's what is needed. Um, for an LGBTQ youth, we're going to see are they already connected with IYG so they can, can you know, continue to receive that support or um, hook into that support right away. And if the answer is no, well, I really need a place to go right now, um, we're going to set up a time for that young person to come in. We are a voluntary and free program, so uh, what that means is a youth chooses to come to stop over. It's not a call from a parent saying, I'm dropping my kid off, you take them. It's not the school, the courts. It's this youth needs to want to come to us, and we will do everything we can to help them. And in terms of reaching out to stop over, what number would they call or what's the best way to access The 24-hour number is 317-635-9301. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we actually don't have a 24-hour number, but you can reach us at indianaeathgroup.org or 541-8726. As far as crisis lines are concerned, we are huge uh, partners with and advocates of uh, Trevor Project, so trevorproject.org. Trans Lifeline is a trans-specific suicide hotline. Uh, please look them up and reach out to them. And then locally, 211, I don't know, not very many people know that 211 actually staffs a suicide um, prevention hotline as well. And so if anyone is ever suicidal and you're uh, living in, in Indianapolis, you can call 211 and they have a plethora of other social support, but specifically they can help intervene in a suicide situation. Thank you. And um, Lo, um, in terms of, you know, maybe someone that's listening right now um, and they're just kind of unsure, um, you know, if they should, you know, take the step to either call a crisis line or to reach out um, to IYG, um, what kind of um, advice might you provide them? It's a good question. I, I think that's something, that moment where you're like, what should I do next and should I take this next step is really, really important. And I think just giving it a chance, giving a chance by reaching out to someone, someone else, other than being so isolated and staying in isolation. Because it's easy to get in that, um, that mode of just being isolated all the time. Um, I've been there and I've also reached out and that's helped me a lot. But I think giving it a chance, giving life another chance um, has helped me. And I know that it could help someone else. Because um, there are people out here that care, people out here that want to help you. And, um, they want to be there for you. And I think that's, you know, really huge for people to hear. Um, and so I think, you know, to kind of, um, you know, provide a little bit more background on that, um, if you could share some of the success stories, whether it's a personal story um, or stories from, you know, individuals that have engaged with your programs, um, if you have a, either a favorite success story or something that just kind of sticks out in your mind. Yeah, for us, we like I said, we're trying to impact the, the whole youth, and so that means coming um, from different sides and understanding where they are. 
And we have a suicide prevention program that we developed at IYG that's t specifically targeted at LGBTQ youth. And um, there's not another one that we could find in the country or the world, actually. And so we've been really privileged to kind of develop this and really uh, we're pilot in the first year of piloting it. So to be on the journey with the youth in that. And we had a youth who was involved in that program who's who recently came out as, as trans to his family and his family was struggling with it. Um, and his family was accessing our family program pretty regularly and um, really got to a point where they, they had a, a, an individual family meeting with our family program coordinator and, and our Thrive facilitator and they were able to, um, at the be beginning of the meeting, literally completely rejecting, saying this isn't going to happen in our house, he, they're going to have to wait till they're 18, I'm not going to use that name, I'm not going to use those pronouns. To the end of the meeting, one of the parents saying, I always, I always wanted a son. And I knew that that meeting occurred, and I was facilitating Thrive, Dare to Be Powerful, our suicide prevention program that that youth was actually involved in at that time. And I was coming into the program, that the session that night, and that youth was talking to his friends and saying, you'll never believe it, you'll never believe it, I have the best dad ever. Uh, he told me today he was, he's going to let me start HRT, hormone replacement uh, therapy, and, and get on testosterone. And I just kind of smiled to myself as I'm preparing for this session because that's really what our work is about. Our work is not about um, getting the glory and and the recognition for what we do. The work is about that kiddo thinking he has the best dad ever, mm -hmm. and he does, because what united that family and that youth and the, what kept that youth here was, was the love that his parents had for him. And sometimes people just need a little bit of, of uh, coming alongside and holding of hands and journeying together to realize, wait, this is just about love. Thank so you. that's a, a success of friendship. Very powerful. Um, in terms of you know someone that's listening today and they want to you know be of support, whether they're um, you know a youth or a family member or just you know someone from the community um, that would like to either you know volunteer at Stopover or um, IYG, how might they do that? Where would they connect? I think they can connect easily through the through our phone number, still 317-635-9301 website, which is stopoverinc.org or email stopover at stopoverinc.org and we will get you connected to the right person. Um, find out how you're interested in helping. Make that match. Yep. IndianaYouthGroup.org um, and if you want to volunteer, it's a simple email, volunteer at IndianaYouthGroup.org. Um, reach out to us and we'll make sure to get you connected in the ways that you'd like to be. Thank you. Um, you know, and in terms of this, you know, of June being um, the month of pride, um, you know, it is kind of a month that we want to, you know, have, you know, knowledge and awareness um, about um, LGBTQ, LGBTQ youth in our community, um, kind of, but this is something that is also kind of, you know, it's year round. Um, so what are some things that you would like our um, viewers to take away, um, things that they can continue doing um, throughout the year to keep in mind? Go ahead. Well, for us, um, with uh, June winding down, our, our event season, a uh, really busy event season is just passed. So, of course, we are involved in Pride. We have our LGBTQ youth prom last weekend. We had 175 youth there, and it was beautiful and tremendous. And then our, annual, our first annual gala was last weekend. Uh, in the fall, we do have our art auction coming up ish in, in three or four months um, and we also have a family picnic in August um, we celebrate Trans Day of Remembrance to honor those trans folks who have lost their lives to violence uh, which unfortunately too many still do um, and a lot of others so I would just again re refer to our website and our program calendar we have a lot going on pretty much all the time Thank you. Yeah, we do a lot of outreach activities at community events, uh, pop-up activities. Right now our focus is on uh, kids out of school in meal programs. How can we reach out and make sure they know that services are available year-round? It's not just a during the school year issue. Uh, maybe they don't have teachers or the supports available. Um, as far as activities, we're posting regularly on Facebook, doing some dine to donate type things. Uh, we participated in a flea market recently, uh, really trying to to gear up for uh, this next season and get those things planned. Thank you. And Lo, for um, a youth that might be watching today, kind of what is one takeaway that you would like them to have or something you would like them to know? Yeah, so I think as we saw like last week with the um, 
shooting in Orlando. I think it's important now more than ever to build that community, and to build that community of love and unity, because I think we've been a little bit lucky to grow up in a generation that's been different than, um, say, in the 80s or the 90s. Um, for LGBTQ youth, but that violence is still out there and that stigma is still out there. And it's something that youth and adults face year round. And this has highlighted it. So I would say that reaching out and knowing that you're not alone through this is very important. Um, and I hope it's something that viewers can take away from this. Thank you, and I, you know, I appreciate that, and I think that's definitely, a, you know, a good way, um, you know, to conclude our show is just for our viewers to know that there are um, resources available, um, both through Stopover and the Indiana Youth Group. Um, I do want to um, provide some additional information just to kind of repeat that again. Um, so, if you want to provide again the, you know, the the number for the crisis line, <laughs> that's three one seven. Six three five nine three zero one. Okay. And how would someone reach IYG? Yeah, Indiana Youth Group dot org or three one seven five four one eight seven two six. And I thank you very much for um, you know being on our show today, um, Amber, Miranda, and Lo. Um, and I thank our viewers for watching. Um, and so this concludes our kids, our families, our communities. Thank you.